Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and today we're going to be tackling the next doll in my flashback series. My Patreon supporters voted and came up with Jim and the Holograms and since I had just done a pink hair pop star I felt like Jim would be a little bit too samey samey so I decided to go with my favorite character from the show, Stormer from the Misfits. For my base doll I decided to go with Draculaura. I felt like her face mold had a sweetness to it that would really work well for Stormer. Plus, she has the pink skin tone, which I think that I can tone down and make look like a more natural skin tone. I pulled these two Draculauras out of my stock box, and one of them has some yellow staining from glue seepage on the head, and the other one has some severe yellow staining on the body. So I'm going to use the head from one and the body from the other. I begin the prep work by shaving down the hair on both of the dolls with my electric shaver. I shave down the hair on both dolls, even though I don't plan to use but one, just to save me from the mess of soaking wet hair. I put them head first into a cup of boiled water. This is going to allow the vinyl to become softer so that I can easily pull the head off. I leave it to sit for a few minutes so that it gets nice and squishy. Once I've allowed them to sit for a few moments, I pull the heads out, give them a squish test, and when I'm satisfied, I pull the heads off using a cloth to help protect my hands. I use a flathead screwdriver to scrape down the inside of the head. This grabs the hair and pulls it out of the holes, and it allows me to be able to use my needle nose pliers to pull out the chunks. Jim and the Holograms was just my favorite cartoon, and I felt like it was one of the more impactful ones for my life. It meant a lot to me to see someone who on the outside looks very successful and like everything's going their way, but really deep down there was a lot of problems you just don't see on the surface, and that to me was what Jim and the Holograms was. Did you have a cartoon that was really inspirational or impactful on your life? If so, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear. Using 100% acetone and cotton pads, I removed the factory paint. You can also use just regular nail polish that contains acetone, but I have found it's much harder to wipe the paint away and does take a little bit more elbow grease. I just like it to be nice and easy. Now onto her accessories, because she of course needs her instrument. And while her doll came with an electric guitar, she actually played a guitar in the cartoon, so I'm going to be giving her that version instead. I found this guitar online, however it was a little bit low poly and not exactly like hers looks, so I made a few changes and made it to print resolution and got it ready to print. Her guitar in the cartoon is an orange color, and I don't have any orange resin, so I'm going to mix up some custom colors of my own. I'm using a clear resin, and I'm going to be tinting it with some orange resin dye, and I'm adding some pigment powders as well. Now, I'm going to give you a warning. Don't actually do this. Uh, it was an experiment for me. It's something I never had done, but... While the guitar actually printed fine, I decided to use up the rest of this resin and print some shoes out. However, they failed, and it ruined my fit. After a while and on longer prints, the mica powder starts to settle and it's preventing the light from getting through the resin and causing problems and failures in prints. So it's not something I recommend or if you are going to use it, use a very light hand in it. Uh, do that at your own risk because I did ruin my fit. So here's the guitar all printed, and of course those mica powders in the resin look beautiful, but I won't be doing that again. The flash that the mica powders have in the resin is gorgeous. Maybe next time I just try to do like a glaze after the fact or something. But I do need to get this sanded down and cleaned up where the supports area were on the back, so I'm just using a light grit sandpaper to get that cleaned up. With it sanded and clean, I can begin the paint job, and I'm just painting on all of the details. Jim just has a place in my heart. It's the first cartoon I remember just obsessing over as a kid, and I would wake up super early, and I remember me and my brother had to take turns. Like, he got 30 minutes to watch a show, I got 30 minutes to watch a show. And if Jim and the Holograms ever fell during his 30 minutes, I would have to barter and give him an extra one of my 30 minutes so that I could watch the show I wanted to watch so badly. And it stuck with me through my adulthood, and I have all the original 80s dolls, and I've collected some of the Integrity dolls too. Um, my husband bought me one of the cell arts of Stormer two years ago for my birthday, I do believe, and I love it. And I have a signed copy of a script from Christy Marks that a friend of mine sent me who used to work with Christy on the show. I've even dressed up as Jim and the Holograms characters for multiple Halloweens. One year I got my husband to dress up as Rio and I went as Jim, and then another time I dressed up as Stormer and had a whole bunch of my co-workers dress up as different Jim and the Holograms characters. It was so much fun.
Now to add her strap to the guitar, and I wanted to thank Rebecca from Bex Money Studios. She actually sent me a few supplies, and this was in there, and it just so happened to be the perfect thing for this guitar. So I'm gluing one end to it, then measuring out how long I need it to be, and then attaching the other bit with a little bit of super glue. Sorry this video took so long. I don't usually spend so long on a more simple doll like this, but I actually got food poisoning during the weeks I was working on it, and I was out of commission for a complete two days. And then even after that, I just wasn't fully up to working all the time, so I wasn't working near as much as I usually do. Draculaura's hands are a bit splayed out and weirdly shaped, so I'm going to make it a little bit more shapely so that it can more easily hold the guitar and look like it's playing. I'm using my heat gun to heat up the plastic and then holding it into shape and using my canned air upside down to freeze it in place. I have noticed that over time these do loosen up and don't stay the same shape that you originally make them. I always make mine more extreme than I actually need so that they maintain a shape that's usable for longer. I start sewing her skirt by sewing the two side front panels to the center front panel and on one side I am stopping halfway down so that there is a split there. I flatten now all of my seam allowances and glue them in place so that there is a nice flat look to the garment. I sew the two back panels to the front panel at the side seams. I attach a velcro closure. I always put my hook in, which is the rough end, face up. This way it's not scratching against the doll's surface at any point. And then I use my loops face down. I first apply them to the edge of the fabric, then I fold that over and tuck in that raw edge. I stitch a rectangle on top of both Velcro pieces. I place the skirt onto the doll inside out and mark where I need to sew up the remaining back portion. Her top is made up of four pieces, the two back pieces and the front piece, as well as a front ruffle. For the front ruffle, I couldn't find any zebra print striped stuff that is in doll scale, so I've taken and cut my ruffle out of some white fabric, and I'm using some flocked heat transfer vinyl in black. I cut a handful of squiggly little pieces that look like zebra stripes, and then I'm going to lay these on top of my ruffle and get their placement correct, and then I'm going to use my flat iron to secure these in place. I clip away the excess pieces and then remove their protective coating. I sew the front to the back of the one shoulder seam. I sew the other back piece to the front piece at the side seam. I top stitch down the front ruffle along the neckline. I fold over the raw edge along the neckline and secure it in place with some fabric fusion glue. This is just going to allow for a cleaner look. I sew the remaining side seams together with right sides facing. After that I can finish the top off with a velcro closure. For her shoes, I'm using a pair of my 3D printed pointed toe shoes that are available in my Etsy store. I give them a light sanding and then spray paint them black. Now onto her face up. Here's the collection of colors and products that I've used, and as always, a full list is available down in the description box. But if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. I always try to answer all of the questions and reply to comments. I prep her with two coats of Mr. Super Clear, and then I get started on her face up. 
I first start sketching in her eye shape, and even though she has been prepped, I am having some difficulty getting the color laid down. Not anywhere near the amount that I was having last time. I was still able to use just my pencil and I didn't have to go in wet, but it was definitely a struggle, so I'm thinking it may be something going on with my Mr. Super Clear, because this is that same can. Once I'm happy with the shape of the eyes, I begin the contouring, and I'm shading in any area that would naturally be in more shadow. So just around the eyes, the corners of the mouth and the nose, underneath the lips, and around the ears. I lightly sketch in her eyelid crease and then begin blushing out her eyeshadow. I do a bit more contouring right around her hairline and her jawline. do a light dusting of blush to her cheeks. When I have plans to do red lipstick, I tend to like to use a dark brown as the detail lines in the lips, so that's what I'm going to apply down first. Now I can go in with my red watercolor pencil. I always just go in with that brown first because I like the depth and richness that it gives the color. I give her lips their full color with the red pastel. I darken up her eyeliner and then I give her waterline and tear ducts more definition. I fill in her scleras with my white watercolor pencil. My first pass is still a bit sheer, so I'm going to have to build this up on every layer. I use my brown watercolor pencil to define the creases and the hollows in the ear. I do a bit more contouring to the face and pump up her eyeshadow some more. And that's the last thing I do before sealing and moving on to layer two. At the beginning of layer two, I start defining the iris shape and blocking in the color. I sketch out a rough brow shape with pastels and then refine it with my pencil eraser. I wanted her to have a more concerned look, so I wanted her eyebrows a little upturned in the center. I feel like her personality in the show is a girl that wants to be a little bit bad, but not fully bad. So she goes along with the plots to like sabotage and do mean things to Jim, but she always voices her concern and keeps them from getting too out of hand. And that's definitely saying a lot because they still got up to some pretty crazy stuff like running Gem and the Holograms car off the road, stealing their musical instruments and stuff, and huge amounts of property damage. The really bad stuff, though, all came from Eric Raymond, like the burning down of Starlight House and, like, planting bombs and crap like that. This stuff got real on 80s cartoons. In the words of Eric Raymond, it's amazing what lawyers can do when you pay them enough. Gem and the Holograms throwing down life lessons to children. But I think that's something that the cartoons from the 80s and 90s did really well. That was the golden age of cartoons for a reason. I felt like they taught kids really valuable lessons. Things like you can't shoot guns at people without people getting seriously hurt. And that sometimes bad guys are just bad guys. And there's no turning them around. And that there are levels of evil. And behind every bad guy, there's an even worse bad guy. One of the ones that I think was most poignant to me was even heroes aren't safe from violence. 
I mean, look at Jim and the Holograms. Sure, the misfits were bad, but Eric Raymond did so much worse stuff and got away with it. And Jim was a really good person and did charitable acts and bad things still happened to her. I just thought it was a good lesson. All right, enough with my rambling. This was my favorite cartoon, so I get a little carried away. But you see, I finished up layer three and I started to add some more details to the eyes, but they weren't building up. So I sprayed her and started on layer four with the eye details. I use one of my favorite castells to draw her eyelashes and I like to use this pencil because it has a harder lead so I can get a finer line on my eyelashes. I paint in her catch lights and the highlights to her waterline using watercolor directly off the pencil. I make sure that the catch lights are a little more opaque and the highlights to the waterline are more sheer. I'm finishing up her face up with a dusting of mica powders. I'm blushing on a pearlescent pink onto her cheeks and green onto her eyelids. And with that her face up's done, I give her three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat to seal in my work. This is going to protect the paint job and lock in those colors. It also helps prevent yellowing from UV light. Now I can start on the body blushing, but before I can start on that, I need to get her sanded. So I just start sanding her with different grits of sandpaper, gradually getting finer and finer with my grit. Once I'm happy, I give her two coats of Mr. Super Clear and get started on the blushing. Just like in the face up, I am shading anywhere that should be naturally in shadow and then highlighting the contours and curves of the body. A big thank you and shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. I really love getting to share my process with you guys. Angelica, Dollicious, Jennifer Medina, Kelly Barnard, Camille, Kitsy, Stormcrow Studios, Donna Magana, Bex Mini Studio, Oh, oh, AK Magpie, Angela Hendrickson. My supporters on Patreon get first offerings for doll purchase, participation in polls, behind the scenes content and in progress photos, clothing patterns that I've created, and lots more. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description box below. Of course, she needs some hair, so I'm going to prep this yarn in this vagriated glue color. And I'm just wrapping it around this cardboard form and just wrapping several loops and then cutting it away. Then I can remove the two individual threads that are woven into this type of yarn. I loop the prepared strands of yarn onto my barbecue skewers. And once I have the skewer full, I brush it out with a pet hairbrush and then flat iron it straight. I cut the prepared yarn off of my barbecue skewers and then I'm laying it onto my tile. You can use plastic or whatever you want to use as long as glue can easily peel off of it. I just lay it down keeping it relatively neat and then I apply glue to the top trying to keep my line nice and straight. Once the glued wefts have had a chance to dry I peel them up and then give them a trim. Peeling the wefts off of this stuff is always so satisfying. After you've peeled the wefts up, you'll notice that one side of the weft is shiny and one side is matte. When I'm applying wefts to the doll's head, I try to always make sure to apply them shiny side down, just so that if the edges of the wefts do show through, they're less noticeable. I trim my wefts down into smaller sections and apply a small amount of hair gel to them. I then wrap them around my metal skewer and hit them with my flat iron. I do this in a bunch of different sizes to give variety to the curly hair and a lot more times. I've kept a small amount of wefts uncurled for her fringe and I'm going to apply that down to the front of her head and trim it up before I move on. I'm applying this in two layers. I actually attempted to make Stormer about three years ago. After wiping her completely twice 
And I'm talking wiping, wiping, because I was doing a full skin tone color change. So I was having to sand off all of the color I would apply to the body. I gave up on her. It was the first time I had done a full body color change. And it was just out of my wheelhouse at the time. I hadn't gotten very good at it. And she just did not look good. So it's very nice to come back now after all of these years and try to do her again. Because I feel like I've done a much better job than I did that many years ago. I think she was my sixth or seventh attempted doll at the time, so I was still very beginner. Once I have the fringe in place, I can begin adding in the rest of her hair. I start in the back and then I add layer by layer going around until I reach the center of the part. For my center part, I'm going to take one of my weft pieces and I'm going to fold the glued area of it over and hit it with a flat iron to set it into that curve. Then I'm going to curl it like normal and then apply it to the part line. I just butt the two pieces up against each other to form a nice neat part. Stormer is also available for purchase on my Etsy store, so check out the link in the description box if you're interested. With her hair completely on now, I can do a small amount of styling and then I'm going to add in her flower to her hair. All that's left is to get her dressed and for the final photos. I want to thank you so much for watching and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. As always your likes and comments always help greatly with the YouTube algorithm which no one seems to know how it works. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and remember always be creating!